let us discuss let us discuss the disorders of digestive system the disorders of digestive system includes jaundice vomiting diarrhea constipation and indigestion we are trying to understand the disorders of gut or digestive system it includes jaundice vomiting diarrhea constipation and indigestion so we will discuss one after another the first one is jaundice jaundice is also called as icterus now during jaundice there is yellowing of eye the white of the eye there is yellowing of mucous membrane wherever mucous membrane is present there is yellowing of tissues that's because of accumulation of bilirubin so that is because of increased levels of bilirubin in blood so once the levels are elevated it is deposited in tissues it is entering into blood so it's present in blood it is deposited in tissues so you can see in blood and in tissues there is elevated bilirubin there is yellowing of white there is yellowing of skin there is yellowing of mucous membrane and there is also anorexia lack of appetite is called as anorexia so these are the symptoms of jaundice in french jaune means yellow jaune jaune means yellow there's a french word now normal bilirubin levels is 0.5 to 1.5 mg per deciliter this is the normal bilirubin levels in blood for every 100 ml deciliter is 100 ml of blood so there is half or 1 and 1/2 mg of bilirubin but in diseased condition it is more than 2 mg half to 1 and 1/2 mg per deciliter in healthy people but if it is crossing 2 mg anything above 2 mg per deciliter it is called jaundice now there are three different types of jaundice the three different types of jaundice includes the prehepatic jaundice it is called prehepatic jaundice it is also called hemolytic jaundice we are aware of the fact that see how is bilirubin produced when red blood cells when red blood cells when they are broken down it will release bilirubin inside red blood cells there is hemoglobin inside red blood cells there is hemoglobin hemoglobin is the respirator pigment but once the red blood cells become senile or old it is broken down hemoglobin is broken down globin and iron is removed and the and the porphyrin rings present surrounding the iron are converted into bile veridin initially later converted into free bilirubin so it is releasing this this is done by mononuclear phagocytes and the free bilirubin is released into plasma albumin is taking it and taking it to the liver in liver it is converted into a different form called conjugated bilirubin conjugated bilirubin it is is combining with glucuronic acid in this form it is water soluble 
free bilirubin is not water soluble so in this form it is released into gut in gut bacteria acts on that it is converted into it this is now converted into urobilinogen here it is converted into urobilinogen and it is excreted outside through feces this is what's happening now prehepatic jaundice there is no problem here or here there is problem here so that means normally some 1% see 1% of the cells die daily and 1% of the red blood cells are formed daily but some cases there is abnormal destruction of rbc so that more free bilirubin is produced more amounts of free bilirubin is produced so the levels are so high that the liver is not able to collect them and not able to metabolize them under that condition it is called as prehepatic joint hepatic is liver prehepatic means problem in the blood so it occurs because of malaria sickle cell anemia thalassemia certain drugs like primaquine autoimmune hemolytic anemias several conditions you see prehepatic jaundice see in all these conditions see malaria when plasmodium has entered it will affect two areas one is the red blood cells other is the liver cells so in red blood cells it is having hemoglobin to eat inside the liver cells it has got glycogen and lipids to survive so red blood cells are broken down too many red blood cells are broken more of free bilirubin released genetical disorders like thalassemia sickle cell anemia so it is, they are inherently genetical defects where there is more destruction of rbc autoimmune hemolytic anemias it is a autoimmune disorder where our own immune system produces antibodies against our own red blood cells so it is a diseased condition in which more red blood cells are broken down and certain drugs like primaquine certain drugs that we take to cure other disorders for example to cure malaria some of us take primaquine that's when certain drugs are taken more red blood cells are broken so certain conditions there is prehepatic jaundice it is also called as hemolytic jaundice so where you can see more of red blood cells are broken more free bilirubin is produced and the liver is not in a capacity to collect all of them so there is elevated bilirubin in blood which results in jaundice it is also called hemolytic jaundice the second type is hepatic jaundice also called cholestatic jaundice in hepatic jaundice i use the word hepatic hepatic means liver so there is no problem in this area there is a problem in this area of liver so liver is damaged so when liver is damaged you can see this conjugated bilirubin is not being excreted so some of this conjugated bilirubin will go back into blood so and its levels inside the blood is elevated so liver is damaged because of certain conditions viruses alcohol hepatotoxic drugs like paracetamol non steroid anti inflammatory drugs like aspirin ibuprofen industrial toxins like arsenic carbon tetrachloride and cirrhosis 
hepatic jaundice now when i say hepatic jaundice liver is damaged liver can be damaged because of several viruses is also called cholestatic jaundice now viruses hepatitis a b c d e there are several strains uh, some of them like b and d they enter through blood or sex some like a and c they enter through food and water so these viruses when they enter into our body they they colonize inside the liver and liver cells are damaged now when liver cells is damaged the capacity of liver cells to excrete conjugated bilirubin is reduced so conjugated bilirubin is going back into blood alcohol alcohol causes damage to liver alcohol also causes liver cancer now when we take alcohol alcohol is ethanol or ethyl alcohol c2h5oh now after it enters into blood the liver will try to collect it and it will try to reduce the toxic effect of hepatic jaundice also called as cholestatic jaundice now during hepatic jaundice there is no problem in this area there is a problem in this area i mean inside the liver the conjugated bilirubin is not being excreted that's because the liver cells are damaged so conjugated bilirubin is again going back into the blood earlier we saw in pre hepatic jaundice free bilirubin is higher in quantity in blood but in case of conjugated bilirubin there is there is elevated level of conjugated bilirubin so conjugated bilirubin produced inside liver because the cells are damaged so it's going back into the blood so there is elevated level of conjugated bilirubin in blood now it is caused by various factors viruses so we have got a to e hepatitis viruses several strains of viruses hepatitis a b c d e in that order hepatitis is inflammation of liver now when it is caused by basically by viruses so when viruses enter into liver by certain parts of liver is damaged so it results in inflammation so that's called as hepatitis alcohol alcohol causes liver damage now when we take alcohol after it enters into blood liver tries to collect that alcohol and try to detoxify it in that process the ethanol is first converted into acetaldehyde it is first converted into acetaldehyde acetaldehyde is poisonous it is toxic so acetaldehyde we later converted into it is later broken down into carbon dioxide and water now acetaldehyde causes liver damage it also results in liver cancer hepatite hepatotoxic drugs various drugs that affects liver you take overdose of paracetamol it affects liver paracetamol is an antipyrogen so it reduces inflammation and body temperature the paracetamol taken in extra doses damages liver and non steroid anti inflammatory drugs like aspirin ibuprofen ibuprofen when these when these drugs are taken in continuously in extra quantities so it, they damage liver and certain industrial chemicals certain industrial chemicals like carbon tetrachloride carbon tetrachloride is used in fire extinguishers it is used in refrigerants it is used in floor cleaners so and arsenic along with lead it is used as uh, as an alloy in lead batteries arsenic arsenic is also used in pesticides now these substances when the, through food chain or, or by inhaling when they enter into our body so they causes liver damage the cirrhosis cirrhosis means the soft liver becomes hard a soft liver it becomes fibrous and hard over a period of time it is called cirrhosis
Cirrhosis can again result because of alcohol, because of viruses, or because of various drugs gradually. Now because of cirrhosis there is jaundice. So various substances which affect liver, damage the liver and then conjugated bilirubin is released into blood, it is called as hepatic jaundice. Post-hepatic jaundice. Also called obstructive jaundice. Caused by gallstones or biliary cancers. Post hepatic, there is no problem here. So, normal free bilirubin is produced, it is entering into liver. Inside the liver, conjugate bilirubin, liver is also normal. So, when the liver, the, the bile juice, the liver produces bile juice and it is stored inside the gallbladder. So it is produced, it is entering into gallbladder. So it is temporarily stored there. Liver produces bile juice and that bile juice is temporarily stored inside the gallbladder. Gallbladder is present just beneath the right lobe of liver, underneath the right lobe of liver. So and sometimes there are stones inside the gallbladder. So that is gallstones. For some cases there are cancers anywhere in the can cancers, cystic duct, hepatic duct, common bile duct, hepatopancreatic duct, anywhere in the biliary system if there is a, any cancers under that conditions. So there is obstruction of the bile. So bile present here is not moving in this direction. When bile is not moving, bile is not coming from the liver. So there will be elevated level of bilirubin there. So that, that condition where problems beyond the liver. So you call it as post-hepatic jaundice. So post-hepatic jaundice is also called as obstructive jaundice. It can be because of gallstones or biliary cancers.